Existentialism and Buddhism, Points of Linkage Despite the fact that there are many diverse variants of both existentialism and Buddhism, it is possible to trace rough and approximate points of linkage between them. One thinker who outlined three such linkage points was the great American psychologist Rollo May. According to May, both existentialism and Buddhism are concerned with ontology, or the study of being. They both seek a relation to reality that cuts below the cleavage between subject and object, and they both would insist that the Western absorption in conquering and gaining power over nature has resulted not only in the estrangement of the human race from nature, but also indirectly in the estrangement of the human race from itself. Beyond this, however, existentialism's hermeneutic element would suggest additional points of linkage. Basically, a hermeneutic is a systematic philosophical interpretation of something. In this case, interpreting our everyday experience in order to gain an understanding of the meaning of our existence, or being. However, since interpreting our everyday experience is itself nothing more than another type of experience, the insights we gain into the meaning of existence can't help but influence the kind of experience we'll have afterwards which in turn influences how we understand our existence further on down the road, and so on. So, basically, a hermeneutic way of understanding our existence is a circular way of understanding it. In this respect, the existential project is an open-ended, non-linear way of understanding things. The point of existential thinking is not to get somewhere, or to seize hold of an ultimate set of truths by proceeding through a stepwise sequence of realizations. Rather, the point is to find ourselves on the way, to take the next step on life's road, and to engage the ongoing adventure of existence with a greater cognizance of its charm, depth, and possibilities. However, Buddhist practice also places emphasis on circular, non-linear ways of understanding. One place to glimpse this is in Buddhism's frequent emphasis on repetitive practices, such as those of meditation and mantras. Of course, there are many ideas of what these practices actually are, and they can certainly take many different forms. However, most of them have to do with learning to inhabit the present moment more fully by repetitively and patiently dwelling with whatever we're experiencing in it. In much the same way that hermeneutics invites us to dwell circularly and at length with some question or issue, so too does Buddhist practice emphasize what Shunryu Suzuki calls the spirit of repetition. It's precisely our capacity to dwell with what is, again and again, that allows us to become fully aware of it and ultimately to live toward it. However, Another point of linkage between existentialism and Buddhism has to do with affirming the fundamental impermanence of our truths, and indeed, the impermanence of all reality. One of the most poignant illustrations of this within the Buddhist tradition lies in the practice of creating sand mandalas, beautiful geometric designs made out of individual grains of colored sand that are meant to be admired for a short time and then swept away. Basically, Buddhist sand mandalas are a way of illustrating the principle of impermanence that pervades all of reality, including ourselves. They're also graphic, symbolic ways of calling into question our habitual attachments to having things seem permanent, stable, and predictable. Which, of course, nothing is. However, a similar affirmation of impermanence exists in the hermeneutic element of existentialism. That's because at any point, the circular activity of experiencing life, then understanding our experience, and then re-experiencing life can ask us to let go of how we've seen things in the past. So, like Buddhism, existentialism invites us to hold on to our current understandings and perceptions loosely, and not to grow overly attached to them. In the end, from an existential perspective, all of our insights are themselves sand mandalas that will eventually be swept into the sea of the universe along with everything else. Another related point of linkage has to do with the place of suffering within both existential and Buddhist thought. From a Buddhist perspective, the real root of our misery lies in our attachments and aversions. 
Basically, we're miserable because we're attached to some idea that our lives and our experiences need to be some particular way, and that we need to be doing things to force life to conform to that idea. But of course, the deeper reality is that life doesn't need to be any particular way. Life follows its own logic, quite apart from our attachments and aversions. And life's logic is primarily a logic of impermanence. Basically, it's our resistance to accepting that reality that's at the root of our misery. The way out of misery, then, has to do with first becoming aware of this, and then letting go of our habit of being ruled by our cravings, attachments, and aversions, and letting life be what it is instead. This, of course, sets up a very different paradigm for our lives than the culturally predominant one, which is mostly about attaching to things that we desire and then trying to obtain them for ourselves. Existentialism also defies many of our culturally validated mores, especially insofar as it places emphasis on confronting the difficult, suffering side of life. Basically, it's hard to encounter existential thought without being impressed by how often existentialists explore life's darker sensations, such as anxiety, angst, dread, despair, nausea, dizziness, ambiguity, etc. But why do existentialists do this so often? Well, as Albert Camus once put it, seeking what is true is not seeking what is desirable. Basically, existentialists aren't interested in making people feel good. They're interested in confronting the reality of our existence. Consequently, like Buddhists, existentialists place emphasis on encountering life as it is, rather than on dwelling primarily in the haze of our attachments, aversions, and cravings for something else. In this regard, both Buddhism and existentialism place a great deal of emphasis on the process of awakening to reality, and this may well be the greatest point of linkage between them. In this regard, both Buddhism and existentialism place emphasis on the dynamics of expanding human awareness and mindfulness. Of course, there are also many points of difference and divergence between existentialism and Buddhism. For instance, Existentialism is a comparatively recent phenomenon that emerged from the ferment of Western culture and philosophy. In contrast, Buddhism has been evolving for millennia and has issued from an Eastern perspective and sensibility. However, as our world becomes increasingly more integrated across geographic and traditional boundaries, these sorts of distinctions probably matter less than the fact that both existentialism and Buddhism represent humanity's ongoing attempt to awaken to the reality we're inhabiting, and then to begin living in a more faithful and more fruitful relation to that reality.